Honorado and company in person. It's always in person. Kind We're of, not right? always in person together, though. Yeah, there it is, together. Chris and Ashley uh, live from the station on a Thursday morning. If you're catching us on TV over the weekend, thanks for joining us. We have a jam-packed show to get to in terms of guests. A couple of stars from the NBC sitcom Grand Crew. Network sitcoms are making a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, I'll, a little bit. I'll tell you right now. Derek Rowland, head coach of the Albany Patroons, will join us. And Heine Thompson from the Albany Firewolves will pop on the show as well. An important night uh, down at MVP Arena on Saturday night. By the way, speaking of MVP Arena, big news into the Capital Region on Wednesday night regarding the Albany Empire. Let's get going. This is Honorado and Company, sponsored by Alpen House. Shout out to our people at Alpen House, Katie Osborne, Andy Heck, and thrilled to have Saratoga Eagle. Yeah. Mikkel of Ultra back with us here on Honorado and Company. They can't stay away. Yeah. They, they try to get, we pull them suck back, them right back in. in. That's the whole key. Jeff Buchlick, the president at uh, Saratoga Eagle. A great dude, a huge Bills fan, and a supporter of the show. We thank him for that. Let's get into the news here. Yeah. This broke, Roger broke this story on Wednesday evening that touchdown Eddie Brown and his son Antonio Brown are joining the Albany Empire. Now, Antonio's not going to play, not yet anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him to decide one night, you know what, I'm ready to throw on the cleats oh. and pads again, let's go. But anyway, Antonio Brown is going to be a financial contributor to this franchise that lost money in its last two seasons. And touchdown Eddie Brown, of course, the Albany Firewolves legend and no, AFL. Firebirds. Group. Firebirds. What I call them? Firewolves. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> he might be able to play lacrosse. I yeah, don't know. Maybe. Uh, AFL legend yep. um, is going to be part of the day-to-day -day operation. So the two Browns in town we're told on Thursday with a press conference, our Dan Levy covering that story down at MVP Arena. Is this getting you jazzed up? What does this do for the meter? That's not a, that's not going to be a yes coming uh, out of her mouth. I've seen that look many times. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Uh, it's For me, it's more exciting that Eddie is involved than Antonio, to be completely honest with you. Okay. I know the younger generation will get fired up about Antonio. Eddie Brown is, is like my childhood. Mm. Like I was a consistent fan in fire at Firebirds games, and they were some of the most fun I've ever had. Some of my earliest like sports memories involved touchdown Eddie Brown scoring touchdowns, the Firebirds winning championships, living here in the Capital Region. So that for me makes it cool. The Antonio thing adds a little bit of extra pizzazz to it. Also, probably adds a little bit of drama to it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's cooler than it is without them. Bonnie checking in first time. She says, loves the show, especially during football season. Here's the beauty of football season, Bonnie. It never ends. It literally never ends. And we have Aaron Rodgers news to get to this morning. We will wow. definitely do that. J-Man is watching. Jason, good to see you, buddy. Uh, Jeff Casey as well checking in. Good morning, in. Jeff. Good to see you, Jeff. Carol is here with us as well. Did I say hello to Nick yet? Nick, who day? How are you, buddy? He's staying put. Sam is here as well. Yeah, T. Higgins is is staying put. And uh, and Brian is checking in, too. I'm one of the fellas. Yeah, always. Always just one of the guys, for sure. Um, all right. Nick says, Eddie Brown, legend. Antonio. Mm. Antonio has, has I, I assume he still has deep pockets. He's gotten into some, well, some, some deep waters yeah. legally over the last couple of years, but I imagine he still has some deep pockets to help and, out this franchise. And that's the thing. It's like, do you want everything that comes with Antonio Brown? Well, I don't know, but you want his money. So what better guy than a former NFLer um, yeah. who had a, a career that some people would kill for, e even as short as it was and as dramatic as it was, people would kill for that career. Yeah, I mean, seven-time pro bowler. He was an all-pro in Pittsburgh, uh, won a Super Bowl and, and caught a touchdown in that Super Bowl victory with the Buccaneers. Um, he burst onto the scene as a, a great kick returner and then obviously proved to be maybe the best receiver in, in all of football when he was at his absolute height. Uh, things went off a cliff from there. 
but it will make things interesting. Yes. I, people will be if just nothing else inherently more interested in this team because of the involvement of the Browns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our novice people, by the way, novice clothing company, uh, the outfitter of the Albany Empire. Mm -hmm. So maybe they do a little AB84 or touchdown Eddie Brown yeah. throwback type of stuff. That I would, would love cool. like a touchdown Eddie Brown t-shirt jersey that I would be all about that. All right, Nick and Garrett, you're watching. I know you Number usually 17. catch it on TV. You're watching. Make make that happen for Ash, a, uh, an Eddie Brown. Uh, huh, this is interesting. Why are we both here? <laughs> I don't even know why we're both here. Carol probably knows uh, us better than, than we know ourselves yeah. at this point, to be honest. I have some work to do today on my day off. Aaron Rodgers' decision hangs in the balance past my prediction. Listen, that was a slam dunk. Now I for did me. I, slam dunk. I did get extended to a week. We've we've still passed it, but uh originally I thought, oh, this is gonna happen quickly. You and said then, a few then days, I said, right? okay. What did we say? Three days? Yeah. I said, let's put it at a week. Let's put the over under at a week. I'll take the under. You took the over. Rodgers has emerged from the darkness. He well, has said yeah, he has said that uh <laughs> yesterday just yesterday just wednesday said the decision is coming soon the packers have said we want to know before march 15th which is the start of free agency they will know before that but it could still be a couple days if you're watching that again on tv over the weekend maybe maybe we know what the heck is happening with him but um but yeah i i, I don't know it, it do you get any sense at this point now which way he's leaning? Because ultimately, it's going to be his decision. If he wants to be back with Green right. Bay, the Packers are going to take him back. If he says, I want to be traded, the Packers are going to fulfill that request. They're happy to go to Jordan Love at this point. Yep. Um, what do you think he does? Uh, it feels like the Jets for me, but I, I don't love that. It just I don't know that anything else. It doesn't sound like the Raiders are real – like player at this point. Oh, it's mm -hmm, funny. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't sound like the right. Listen, we talked about he's going to be the first domino to go. Once he goes, then Derek Carr goes. Um, and it sounds like Derek Carr and the Saints are kind of what people think is going to happen. But if Aaron Rodgers doesn't go to the Jets, well, then then Derek Carr goes to the Jets. I, I read Derek Carr to the Panthers. Hmm. Field Yates of ESPN okay. had that this week. So, I, so not drafting a quarterback I, for the Panthers. I don't think they okay. need to. No, I don't think they need to. Okay. Um, you know, they drafted uh, Willis last year. They could stick with him. Didn't no, they, didn't the Titans draft Willis? Oh, they did. I'm yeah. sorry. That's the Titans. Malik Willis, yeah. So, yeah, they don't have. No, they, they loaded up well, on the Mayfields and Darnolds and. They, um, no, maybe they did draft a quarterback that's just kind of waiting in the wings, but I don't know if he's going to play. Isn't kid it? from uh, Ole Miss. Oh, I thought it was a kid from Howell UNC. went to Washington, oh, a kid yeah, from yeah, Ole yeah. Miss to yep. Carolina. Yep. This is how far re removed we are from football season. Right. We already forget what the heck happened. Yeah. Um, so no, yeah, I, I think but in that scenario, I think Carr could go before Rodgers. Okay. Yeah, if he goes to the Panthers, you're saying. I mean, the Jets are the one stick in the mud here. Yeah, they're the they're the team in a holding pattern. I think these other teams, New Orleans, Carolina, they'd be happy to move on. Yeah, Jay Matt Man's Corral, thank you. Um, I think they'd be happy to just let's make a decision and go with it. Right. And and maybe it's Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo, and we're not we're not in the Aaron Rodgers running anyway. That's maybe you know. Uh, this is, I mean, I know, I think you like this. It's not going to happen, Jeff, but I think Ashley likes this idea. Yeah, but the latest that I saw from our friend Ralph Bacchiano mm -hmm. was that the Giants, Joe Shane says the Giants are not really close with Daniel Jones and his agents. They don't which need to be. doesn't surprise you because he wants $45 million. Yeah, they'll tag him um, and... Well, they. I think the idea is they, and they're going to meet again today. They've met three straight days. They're going to meet again today. They want to get a decision done before they would have to tag him. Um, but my guess is maybe they don't. They're going to tag him. I think they're going to have to tag him. I, I don't see that. I don't. I don't see that coming together without no. without having to tag him. Uh, I feel like we've asked this question before. Um, let me ask this ask one. Ask it again. Instead. Go ahead. Roger's best option for twenty twenty three. I'm. I'm. I'm moving back towards Green Bay in my mind on this one. Uh, last week in, on the show, I know I said, oh, he's definitely gone. That was when he had just emerged from the Oregon darkness. From the darkness. I feel like he's going to – I think he's going to say, okay, look, 
I've only got a couple years left in me. Can I go win immediately in New York? And is Vegas a better option? Yes, Devontae Adams is there, but can I can I win in that short window? My best opportunity, the way Green Bay is moving a lot of salary around to signing bonuses to create cap space, I think Rodgers might say, this is my best opportunity to win. The defense is really good. It's going to get better. I have both of my stud running backs still. Defense. It's not. I don't know. The way that they put, listen, they severely underachieved in the first half of the season last year. Yeah. The Green Bay defense. Yep. And but they Jair got Alexander is as good as Sauce Gardner. They got yeah. The pass rush is pretty darn good. Preston Smith, Kenny Clark comes back healthy. They're going to keep David Bakhtiari, Rogers left tackle. They just worked out a way to, to maneuver some money with him. They're going to create some cap space here that I think keeps them very competitive. And oh, by the way, which division would you rather try to win? The NFC North with the Lions, Bears, and Vikings or the AFC East? That answer might be different next year. With the Bills and Dolphins. The Bills, yeah, not uh, not great. But I, again, the Dolphins, I'm not sure that they're going to be a real player. The Vikes at points were really good this year, and the Lions are the real deal. Lions are I, very good. I think, yeah, Sam says he should stay in Green Bay. I'm not sure he's going to win in Green Bay either. Uh, I think the Jets, like we said, the Jets may be the best just kind of plug in, but I still don't think you're going to win year one. So you'd have to be there two plus years. And is he going to be there three years? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to transition to this just because. But can you imagine that guy throwing to the young receivers that like he would love those guys? Yeah. Garrett Wilson, like he would love that guy. Yeah, that's one guy. Yeah, I get it. Elijah Moore and Denzel Mims. I don't know. They're not doing a lot for me. Yeah. Running game any good? O-line any good? I mean, if Brees Hall comes back, their running game is good. Yeah. No Dylan and Jones. Uh, Sam is taking a get shot at your here. orange here. I'm not excited to watch that. If they were in the NCAA tournament, I wouldn't be excited to watch them. Yeah, they've they've gone into the tank a little bit here. All right, let's take a quick timeout. When we come back here on Honorado and Company, uh, uh, some hockey. Let's hockey. do some Hockey. What kind of stories that's been told on you? That may be a lot of things in life you used to do. If you can't give true love to me, I'll understand. Just do the best you can. The Galope Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. And now back to Honorado and Company, sponsored by Alpen House. All right, Ash. A um, couple of big, big moves in the hockey world that are you know regional to us. I think we got a lot of Rangers fans, even if they're fringe Rangers fans, they're going to pick an NHL team. Most of our viewers probably are picking the Rangers. Tarasenko and Patrick Kane. It's big. Blue shirts are all. In they're they're loaded all in. They're saying the window is now, yep. and I think that's interesting when you consider Boston's historic winning yeah, pace. I mean. Tampa Bay, Carolina, very good. Toronto, very good. I mean, the East and the Devils a gauntlet. Mm -hmm. The East is an absolute gauntlet. But the Rangers said we're pushing all in, and look, they didn't give up a ton in either no. of these deals. So I think they were smart yeah. moves. Um, expiring deals with these guys, but I, I, I like the aggression from the Rangers. I don't think it's enough to put them over the top in the East, but I still like that they're just saying, you know what, let's give it a shot. Yeah, they've been really good this year, and they're they're not all that far off the pace of a team like the Devils in their own division. Right. So I yep. I love I like the Tarasenko mm. deal more than I like the Patrick Kane deal, um, but both of them make them better. And like you said, nobody. I get it. Boston has been kind of like world beaters, but the the NHL playoffs always seem to just they bring out the best in everyone. Mm -hmm. And you never know what can happen in a mm -hmm. series. We saw the lightning get beat in series that they shouldn't have or we didn't think they would. Um, so, yeah, I just think anything can happen in the NHL playoffs. That makes it fun. Jeff, our buddy. Yeah. And and I always say, you know, and, and there will be fans who laugh 
it's all it's I, awesome. I don't want the president's trophy. No, because nobody ever wins. It doesn't. Once work they out. win it, nobody wins the cup. I mean, it's very rare yep. that it works. The Panthers were the president's trophy cup uh, winners last year. They're bouncing the second. The round. time the Caps did it, out. You don't want it. Yeah. I think the Lightning may have won it and then won the the real cup, the Stanley Cup. But you just you don't. Jeff's Jeff's point is right. I mean, six teams in the East have a chance to win yep. this thing. You know, I'm fired up about. My Devils. Devils and Timo Meyer, and I thought that was a really good Great move. Yep. Uh, they have an absolute budding superstar in Jack Hughes. And the way it stands today, if the playoffs started today, the old if the playoffs started right. today, Devils Rangers in the first round. That'd be awesome. Texted my cousin Mike about that, who's a huge Devils fan, season ticket holder, and he's like, I would like to avoid the Rangers that early if we could. I say, let's go. Sure. Let's play them. Yeah, let's. It, I, that make it would just make it. It's too fun. good. Jeff Casey is up in Glens Falls. Boy, the Adirondack Thunder, they hot or what? They, they love their hockey. they have And they've been playing some good hockey lately uh, as well. All right, one more time out here before we get to the uh, co-stars of Grand Crew, which is an NBC sitcom. Season 2 premieres Friday night at 8.30 on NBC. We'll roll into the Albany Patroons and head coach Derek Rowland, and then, of course, our Follow the Pack segment with the Albany Firewolves. Back right after this. At Marcella's Appliance Center, our commitment is to you, providing essential appliances that families depend on for cooking, refrigeration, cleaning, and sanitation, plus appliance repair. You can have peace of mind that Marcella's is here for you today and every day, like we have been since 1957, helping you make the right choice with trusted brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and many more. Shop Marcellus Appliance Center in-store, online, or by phone. We're here for you. The Albany Firewolves professional indoor lacrosse team invites you to join us on Saturday, March 4th for Indigenous Heritage Night. Join us as we take on former UAlbany lacrosse star Lyle Thompson and the Georgia Swarm at 7 p.m. at the MVP Arena in Albany. Get your tickets now at albanyfirewolves.com. Join the pack. And now back to Honorado and Company. Sponsored by Alpen House. All right, Ash, we are in the middle of baseball spring training. First impressions of the rule changes. Mm -hmm. the, these are the big three. There is a fourth in terms of the number of times pitchers are allowed to attempt a pickoff. I don't like that one. No, it, that either. really kills the strategy because yeah. if I if I throw over the first base twice and I don't get you, you know I can't throw over a third time right. without getting you. I mean, you can throw over a third time and, and if you pick the guy off, yeah, fine. But if you don't, he's advancing on the base. So your first impressions of, of the rule changes here. We've already had a game end in a tie. It was the bottom of the ninth. Braves, Red Sox. Braves have the bases loaded, two outs, 3-2 count. Batters in the box, eight seconds on the clock, not looking up at the pitcher, ready to go. They call they call a third strike, and that ended the game. Uh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Yes. But that's the reality we live in now, so what do you think? Uh, some of it's ridiculous, like you said. I, I don't hate the pitch clock that much. Mm -hmm. um, I, and listen, the when it comes down to it, they broke down the numbers, and it's saving, like, 20 minutes a game, yeah. which I think is significant enough that you have to take it seriously. And I, I, I don't think it's an awful rule. It's going to affect certainly pitchers like, like we were talking like Shohei Otani, a guy who takes a long time on the mound. It's going to affect him and slow pitchers more than it's going to affect other people, but it's just the reality of it. You got to get used to it and Ken, they'll get used to it. Ken Lee Jansen, who's now a closer for Boston, takes said, the longest said, when did I get so slow? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> have you seen your have you seen your windup? Have you watched it ever? It's always been slow. It's absurd. Yeah, a lot of um, twitching and itching. Yeah, a lot of it, and like unnatural stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, so I don't hate the pitch clock. I enjoy the band shift because I think the shift is ridiculous. But I don't. I don't. I also at the same time don't like telling people where they can and can't play. Mm -hmm. Like it's a baseball field. Mm -hmm. Let them play wherever they want. Well, I hate the shift because so often it doesn't work. That's why I hate it. So I wouldn't employ it as mm -hmm. a head coach, but I don't like the idea of telling people like, nope, you can't play here. You can't put four people in the outfield. Why not? Just let them do whatever they want. Well, that you can do. Well, the, I know, but the NBA tells guys where they can and can't, can't be, be in defensively. The lane. You can't. Yeah, I get it. 
defensive three seconds and you know they don't they don't want but there's there's a a box where you can't be in the yeah. field is just an open like there's no real delineated other than infield sure. outfield yeah yeah but that's not the what they're using have you seen the bigger bases i saw a, a shot um a marlins player gosh i forget who the heck it was now um but he was holding up the old bag and the new bag now they're three it's three inches bigger on each side each side which is enormous so that's 12 inches but it's a it's a it's a, a foot bigger in circumferences for circles but this right, for, but, but for a square yeah we're talking about a foot different it, it looks comical it, when you see them huge. side by side it looks absolutely comical but if it avoids injuries at bases specifically first and second um and it creates guys being more aggressive in terms of stealing bags then i'm all for this yeah. and i wonder i want more stolen base attempts yeah it's interesting to me and i get it i get why because you're three inches closer on the start and then second base is three inches closer to you a full foot uh, yeah you have a foot yeah. yeah so you got six inches to play with like which seems ridiculous but if you probably calculated how many outs at second, say second, for example, on a steal or by like a tenth of a second, I bet you those six inches would more than make up for it. No doubt. You get a little bit farther off first because you don't get too worried about And I mean, my goodness. If but they do look ridiculous. They do. Ridiculous. They do. And I just think that's a weird reason for the bigger bases. Like, I understand the injury reason. I'm all for it. But like the, hey, maybe it'll cut down on uh outs and increase stolen bases it's weird hey jay where were you at the beginning of the segment we talked about this i know and you're, you're reinforcing the idea that and like guys will steal more now because yeah. you only get a certain number of pickoff attempts I, I get that all right let's take another quick break here on honorado and company guests the rest of the way on o and co co-stars from grand crew which is an nbc sitcom season two premieres friday night on news channel 13 at 8 30 back right after this in only 30 seconds Get a head start on summer fun with Elfin House RV. It's our preseason sales event going on now. Come in today to shop America's top brands like Forest River, Coachman, Keystone, and Grand Design. Right now, get this Coachman Catalina for only $3.06 a month or this Primetime Tracer for only $2.52 a month. Our knowledgeable outfitters are here to help you find the perfect RV for your family. Shop online anytime at ElfinHouseRV.com. Buy with confidence at Elfin House RV, your total camping outfitter. And now back to Honorado and Company, sponsored by Alpen House. All right, we're back on Honorado and Company, and our guests, plural here, Nicole Byer, Echo Kellum from the hilarious Grand Crew, which is back on NBC and News Channel 13 Friday at 8.30 for season two. How are you guys? Fantastic. How are you? you? We're good. We are good, too. Thank you for doing the show here. Uh, I'm pumped for season two because everything I've read, and Nicole, I'll let you take this first, is that everybody's a little more comfortable now. Like, I don't know, maybe, you know, the, the jokes are a little looser. The characters are, are a little more in their own fictitious skin. Is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, we had a whole season to play with our characters, figure out what like our characters feel like so like jumping back in was kind of like going home you know mm. going home for the holidays and mm. everybody knows you yeah. and and everyone's your friend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it was like S go back to school almost oh yeah you got to have like a break and then it's like come back you see all the same faces some people are new you feel oh, like oh yeah oh, so sophomores okay. now so, so what, my analogy was, was dumb was analogy. mine was no, dumb no, it's like school it's school not, like not the holidays that's, yeah because yeah, at I'm least at idiot. school that's like where all your friends hang out yeah. you go back home you deal with family you maybe don't want to deal with is that family yeah Ugh. oh god i can't believe i'm so dumb yeah, Ugh. Nicole, way to yeah. Blow that question. yeah. i'm really sorry about that. yeah i'm really sorry i'm embarrassed i should should i leave i should I should get out of here. I'm seeing it play out right here, the brother and sister dynamic that obviously you guys have developed immediately. Uh was that was that easy, bro? Yeah. yeah. I've known him for, well, for 10 Noah? Years. Yeah. Over a decade. Yeah. We've known each other for so long. We run More a sketch than 10 team. Years now, even. Like twelve? Like twelve. Ew. Like in 2011. Too so long. Too get long. out of my life. Oh, brother. But yeah, we want to. play for Nicole. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, now you we can leave. We've seen for four years together. We we've just been playing with each other for yeah, a long, long time. time. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it plays out on screen, obviously. All right, let me ask you this. It is a, it's a show that is brilliantly developed around drinking wine. Um, which of your co-stars is likely to be the most or the biggest wine snob in real life? Biggest wine snob? Uh, Carl? Carl, probably, yeah. No, Gracie. I mean, yeah, you're right. Gracie, Gracie, Gracie yeah, Mercedes, Gracie's definitely a wine yeah, snob. Yeah. I mean, I would say Phil Augusta Jackson. Yes, our creator, creator show, loves wine. He is like, I mean, I think he's the one that's yeah. Really he's the one who like knows them. All, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get more into it yeah. as well. So. He's the one who found the wine bar that's based on that the show is based on yeah. that we all like went to for years before we started doing the show. Yeah. I mean, that that story to me is wild. I love that it is now turned into a TV show. Yeah. Um, Carl also said in an interview I read, guys, that season two, you're now going to drink real wine. Oh, is it yes. Carl that yes. could hold his liquor best or who else? I mean, we're all pretty we're all good. Holding that liquor. Yeah. 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 You know, because we're obviously all extremely drunk. Yeah. I'm I'm always say. very, very drunk. Uh, the network isn't happy about that. No, they put a breathalyzer in my they car. Did. <laughs> Well, everything's a little bit funnier, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. everything is funnier when you're funny. drunk. No, but they we actually just use food color. Yeah, unfortunately. And ginger ale. Yeah. Like that, so we don't juice. get to drink real wine, unfortunately. It's not fair. But all right. What's the best or maybe most exciting part of season two for you each as you get ready for the premiere Friday night? I'm just I mean, excited for people to see the hard work that went into this show. It's a labor of love. Like the crew is amazing. Our camera operators are amazing. Like one of our camera operators, Phil, will just laugh. So like <laughs> you, you like know you know if things are that. immediately funny, because they'll be like, oh, I like yeah. that. And, yeah. and it's not like a can laugh. No, like you have to earn. His yeah, laugh. and our crew worked on Brooklyn Nine Nine, so yeah. it's like yep. when things are funny, you're like, oh yeah, yeah you know, good. you've been doing this for so long. Yeah, but everyone from the crew, the, the execs, yeah, the, our writers, everybody, like, so supportive so and great. great. Just on top of their game. And, our PAs, yeah, they were the great. PAs were killing it. Everyone in accounting yes. was great because yeah. I got my checks on time. That's, right. That's what matters clear, most. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think you guys will just see how much fun we had yeah. on set. It really will come through on um, TV. So I'm really excited for people to see that. I love that. All right. Comedy is, you guys make it look easy, but comedy is hard, especially mm. network sitcom level stuff. It, it can be really good and it might only last a season, but, but why is this one sticking? Because there are six gorgeous individuals mm. and beauty sales. <laughs> people want to watch pretty people on TV. It's, it's funny. Yeah. I think people can really like, um, uh, I like, uh, what identify, identify yeah. with like everybody on screen because there's somebody yep. for somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, and it's a very, it's a very different type yes. of show, but it's also, I think the people at the top, like Phil or Dan, mm -hmm. they're just so tuned in comedically to like what really works and they take really interesting swings. And, and it's super collaborative. Yeah. Like we're always pitching jokes or improvising. Yeah. It's really a fun set to be on. Yeah. That, I think you guys will definitely see it all bleed through how much mm -hmm. fun we're having. It's Friday night, the season two premiere on NBC and News Channel 13, 8.30. Nicole, you're from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. We could do another 10 minutes just talking about Jersey. Where um, in Jersey? Small town called Glenrock up in Bergen County. Oh, okay. I'm from Monmouth County. So yeah. I guess you would call it South Jersey. We say Central. Huh. Huh. I know. It's like... You know the upstate New York divide. If you're, uh -huh. if you're north of New York City, everything's upstate. If you're mm -hmm. south of kind of that Bergen County line, it's everything South Jersey. Yeah, yep, but, it's weird. But Echo, you are from Chicago, and it has produced an incredible line of comedians. Either you know, I, I mean, I've learned a lot about Second City, but yeah. Upright Citizens Brigade. What is it about the Chicago comedy culture that has just created so many great actors? I mean, Chicago is just such a blue collar hard working city so i think the truth is that chicagoans grind so they're always mm -hmm. grinding on the craft they're always trying things they're playing on their toes like I, one of my mottos in life is to it's better to be bold and wrong than right and tentative shout out jordan black uh so mm -hmm. it's like that kind of vibe just i think translates well to like excellence in comedy i mean i'm not putting myself on the same level as some of the chicago greats but i think it, it does the city's really great at breeding some really talented people who work real hard at the craft and give everything they can to it. Yeah. Well, you worked with Sean Hayes, right? Who did a lot with yeah. second city too, well, man. It's, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm seeing the poster behind you guys. I'm ready for the next round. 
Let's get it going Friday night on NBC and News Channel 13. Thank you so much, guys. Continued Thank success. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Teams. Athletes. Organizations. We're transforming the custom apparel industry through products and purpose. Claim your crown. And now back to Honorado and Company, sponsored by Alpen House. All right, Ash, back live now after that conversation with uh, Nicole and Echo, part of the uh, crew of the very funny Grand Grand crew crew. on NBC and News Channel 13. Again, the premiere of season two Friday night and every Friday night at 830. So if you're catching us Saturday night on my four Sunday morning on News Channel 13, you can always catch catch Grand Crew every single Friday night or on Peacock. Yep. There you go. Run it back on Peacock. Peacock. All right, the head coach of the Albany Patroons is Derek Rowe. I mean, this guy will continue to keep the Patroons afloat, which is what I love <laughs> about him. His passion for this Mr. team. Mr. Patroon, they call him. And this city is off the charts. And exactly right. That's why they call him Mr. Mr. Patroon. He's earned every bit of that nickname. Let's bring the head coach into the conversation now. It's Derek Rowland of the Albany Patroons. Coach, it's good to see you, man. How are you? All right, we'll get Coach's mic figured out here in a second. Let me, we'll bring him back in here. We can't in a hear second. you, Coach. Couldn't hear Coach Roland just yet, but I can tell you that the Albany Patroons open up this weekend. This weekend, March third and March fourth, both games at home. Yep. Syracuse Friday night, Lehigh Valley Saturday night at the Washington Avenue Armory. Such great history in that building, it's uh, a cool and one. it isn't all that long ago the Patroons under Derek Roland won a championship yeah. and listen the, the building is cool yes but the team always brings in great talent mm-hmm. um and people love to go watch that team we we were there for a lot of that tbl run last year to the finals yeah and it was wild it was wild yeah and again our guys over at novice cloak doing stuff i mean they're do, they're the, outfitting all these all many patrons all these teams well, we're talking about if they have it their way yeah they will outfit <laughs> absolutely any athlete and team and organization that that is looking for it let's check in back with the coach here and see if he can hear us and if we can hear him coach how are you i'm having trouble hearing you oh you can't hear us okay we can hear you now yeah i I can hear you coach you can't hear us this is live technology at its best right all right coach cannot hear us Still can't hear us. Okay. I can't fix that right now, unfortunately. Right. I don't know if Rocco Recruity is with him in that office, but if he is, maybe he can help troubleshoot he might be home. a little bit. All right. Let's take uh, another quick time out here on Honorado and Company, see if we can get some of this stuff figured out. We're back in only a minute. Happiness is found in simple things. The sun on your face. Sharing laughs. At the campground getting wet, relaxing together, the love of family. There's never been a better time to go outside and play. Alpenhouse Pool, Spa, Boat and RV. Bringing families together and creating memories since 1964. You've heard of unsung heroes. The men and women of Nyscoba are the unseen heroes. For the past year, you've learned about our many charitable endeavors. Now it is my privilege to share with you the work performed by our members, the 20,000 state correction and law enforcement officers shielded from view. They work in difficult and dangerous conditions and are an extension of the police who protect our neighborhoods. NYSCOBA honors New York's police and firefighters and salutes its own members who help deliver a peaceful night's sleep. And now back to Honorado and Company. Sponsored by Alpenhouse. All right. You know what? We've had a similar situation like this back before the show existed kind of on this level. We had a guest who couldn't hear me 
So I started using a whiteboard. So I'm going to throw up questions on the screen to Coach Roland. Coach, I know you can't hear us. Answer that question for me, though. Can't hear a word. Can you hear me? I can. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm having some audio problems, but I can't hear. Well, this season, the Patrons brought me back. Oh, okay. I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it takes me a second. <laughs> Okay, great, great. Well, uh, uh, the love for, for, for the city and, and the Albany Patrol uh, brought me back. I, um, you know, I started my career here professionally many years ago and have had a lot of success. And uh, over that period since I've been here and when I left, I missed it. And now that I'm back, I can't be more happy. So I'm back to try to bring some more memories and some more success and write another chapter in Patrol history. I love that. All right, coach. Here's your next one. Well, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. You know, uh, he he knows the Patroon way. He's been around it his whole life. Uh, he, you know, um, he's been he's been on this basketball journey since he was about five years old, and have a chance to coach him. It's just it's just great. You know, um, he, he's doing pretty well at this point. Um, you know, he thought it would be a lot of pressure, but I just try to release the pressure. You know, you don't have to be anything that you're not. And, uh, and I like the way he's been playing. So he's he's accepted that role, and he's doing pretty well so far uh, in training. Day. All right, here's your next one. Uh, our roster looks pretty good at this point. You know, we, you know, I brought some familiar players. I brought a couple of guys from Oklahoma, a couple of starters, my Deion Lyle, shooting guard, and uh, Mustafa Trey, I'm a power forward, for both uh, big-time players for me in Oklahoma. Uh, I got some local kids, Jamel Hood, mm -hmm. who's a local player, who's a very exciting player, um, probably be a fan favorite here because of his history and all the things that he's done here in the community. And Phil Flurry, he played at uh, University of Albany. And Phil has been doing well. So, um, and I got a couple of guys that I haven't seen yet um, in a game situation, but come in with pretty good revenue. So I'm pretty happy with where this, our starting point is. All right, Coach, you can't hear us, but I'm just going to remind the people that you open up Friday and Saturday night at home. We are going to let you run. Thanks for playing along here and, and helping us out a little bit. I'll give you one of these as a goodbye and a peace. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> good Thanks, stuff, coach. man. Derek Rowland playing <laughs> along with us here good. on Honorado and Company. Good improvisation. So Jimmy Dykes was on with us, uh, boy, years ago now. And something messed up with yeah. technology and the computers back and forth virtually. And he couldn't hear me. He kept saying, I can't hear you. So we used to use these whiteboards yeah. quite a bit. And I was writing things <laughs> out and holding it up. And then I just at the end wrote, pretty great. thanks, Jimmy, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, that was good work. That was our, our you, best way. We to made it. something out of nothing. All right. Save me here, Bill Miller and Performance Industrial. Hello. Dirty. I know. Difficult. difficult. Done. It's Done. all dirty, difficult. And now, Dirty, Difficult, and Done. Sponsored by Performance Industrial. You ever wake up and you just think to yourself, this is probably not going to be my day. <laughs> I had that oh, feeling. You did? At 1.08 oh, this morning. Oh, gosh. Because you didn't sleep until your alarm. And I thought, I don't think I want to do this day. But here we are. We're more than two-thirds of the way through the show. We're going to bring this thing home as smoothly as we can the rest of the way. Bill Miller and Performance Industrial, the Dirty Difficult Done sponsors each and every single week here on Honorado and Company. Ash, what do we say? There is no job that's too dirty or too difficult for them to, to get, get done. it done. You are first. All right. I'm first. My dirty difficult done is that for me, this has been, it's been difficult over the past couple of years now to see good college coaches leave top tier programs. Initially, when I wrote this, I said forced out of top tier programs. And I still believe that that's true in some cases. I, I think Jay Wright was unhappy enough or pushed out enough. Villanova didn't like what was going on because like how unexpected was that? I'm retiring, but the guy's going to coach somewhere else at some point. Mm. I think a guy like Mike Bray, oh. who has, I mean, he's an all time great. 
an all-time great who has taken Notre Dame to new heights. And it's not that much different than the football program, though, in that, like, okay, I know, I get it, it's hard to win there, mm -hmm. but is someone ever going to go there and win and do better than what you have with Mike Bray? No. I don't think so. No. But it also feels he went like – back-to-back -back Elite Eights. Like, hey, I'm, this is my last season, I'm done. And, like, a month later he was like, well, I'm not done coaching. I'm going to coach somewhere else again. So that, to me, is either he was pushed out or he was unhappy enough there that he made it seem like – and it wasn't just like, hey, I'm done at Notre Dame, I'm going to move on to something new. It was like, I'm done. And then it was like, well – but I'm still going to coach. Yeah. It, it's just difficult for me to watch this because these are two guys who are synonymous with each of their programs, Jay Wright at Villanova and Mike Bray at Notre Dame. Yep. And it feels tough to see them. At, maybe they'll go somewhere else. I would take either one of them at Syracuse if Jim Beheim decides he's going to move on at any point in the near future. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be weird to see those – like Kyle Neptune at Villanova is weird. Whoever ends up at Notre Dame, it's going to be weird to see. Yeah, yeah. Um... Quick thought, two local guys on that Bray staff at Notre Dame. Yep. Really kind of curious to see what happens with them um, when when they do get Mike Bray's, I'll say, replacement. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, you think Jay Wright's going to coach again. I'm not so convinced. Mm -hmm. I, he, I think, will take a real liking to the TV gig and well, realize yeah. this and is not be, as bad. He'll be great at it. Yeah. And he has been very good. Mm -hmm. uh, Bray has said, yeah, I'm going to coach again. I don't know what that means, where he goes. Here's a job that is wide open. Maybe it won't be. Maybe the interim keeps it, but it's wide open, and it is a premier program. It's a top 10 program currently, Texas. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying Mike Bray is the guy for Texas, mm -hmm. but there will be jobs out there mm -hmm. where Bray says, boy, I wouldn't mind going there. Um, I look at a, a, a program even like Texas Tech. I don't know that they're completely sold on on what they're doing there so i think he goes to i love that texas tech coach yeah i think he stays at a power five <laughs> okay job yeah remember he came from delaware and went to notre dame i think he stays at a power five job well you know what does that look like exactly i don't know i i, I you know i'm a i'm a notre dame you, fan you love him i love him more than i Root for I root for him more than I root for mm -hmm. Notre Dame basketball. I think he's a phenomenal coach. Him and his turtlenecks. Oh yeah, the mock turtle. What he <laughs> was able to do with this program, yeah. like I said, back to back elite eights, and in both cases on the doorstep of the final four. I mean, they played good, mm -hmm. good games in those elite. You won't get it ever again right. at that program yeah, because maybe not. I, I, yes, it's the ACC, but look at the trend of top talent going south. Mm -hmm. It is following what happened in football years ago. The SEC is now like this Becoming, dominant yep. basketball conference. Yep. And when you add in the programs that are will eventually join the SEC, it only makes it stronger. So that's if I'm Bray, I am headed south because I'm looking at what Brian Kelly chose to do, go to LSU, and hey, I'm going to have a better chance to win mm -hmm. based on my recruiting ability to these certain programs. It's, uh, I don't know how I took your dirty, difficult done and made it my own, but I, That's okay. I weighed in a lot like there that. on break. Here's mine. The MVP in the NBA is done. And there's more than a month to go. And actually this was done even before the all-star break. It's Nikola Jokic. It's going to be three straight for this guy. He's yeah. the only player in the NBA this season, averaging a triple double. Mm -hmm. You have said it. He's the best passing big big man in the game. Yeah, no doubt. And maybe he's the best we've ever seen, if we want to have some recency bias here. Yeah. But he's averaging I mean, 10 assists per game. He's at 25 points a game and more than 12 rebounds a game. And, oh, by the way, he is on the team with the best record in the Western Conference. You know how I get with MVPs. If can't you can't be on an irrelevant team. Yeah, you have to be on a playoff team at mm -hmm. least. There are too many times where, especially in baseball, mm -hmm. where a guy puts up great stats – but his team is nowhere near the postseason. Well, where's the value? Jokic is clearly as value, valuable as any player in the NBA, and he's going to be three straight years the MVP. And I could make cases for other guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Jason Tatum, mm -hmm. Embiid again. Embiid for sure. Giannis. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hurd. I'm kidding. Luka. Yeah, yeah, Luka. Yeah, Luca. But it's Jokic, and and yep. it's not even close. Uh, this is going to be a runaway vote for him, unless there's a little bit of voter fatigue.
but I don't think and there I, will be. No, and I, I get how that happens though. People people don't like old and stay it, it gets stale and people yeah. don't like that they want new and give it to somebody else well that's not how it works you give it to the best player i mean that happened to jordan in the early 90s there was voter fatigue and you know and barkley won it and there was a year where david robinson won the mvp and it maybe should have been barkley it, it, it always kind of gets to a little bit um of that level <laughs> hey he had 20 points and nine assists the, the other, other night, night yeah. Kevin. He was very good. There are reasons beyond him that this Kings team third in the West. Mm -hmm. But I really do believe that he is a big part of that. Like when they made the move to get him, I think that franchise was like, hey, we're, we're better now. Yep. This is a guy who does a lot of things all at once. And so good, good for Kev. I, I love seeing him succeed and the Kings uh, do well as well. All right, that is the performance industrial dirty difficult done. What else do we do each and every single week on we the show? The Ash? Pack. We follow the pack with the Albany Firewolves. We've and got a car edition here. Yeah, I don't know that we've had the car edition before. By the way, quick story. Coach Q. Mm. Coach Raro. Oh, oh I'm, I'm here at the Firewolves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quick story. I was at St. Jude the Apostle mm -hmm. School yesterday on Wednesday doing uh, Read Across America. Mm -hmm. I read Dr. Seuss's Wacky Wednesday. Had never read the book before. I'd never, never even heard of heard it, of it yeah, before. It was a lot of fun. And right behind me were two Firewolves players. Do you know who they were? So this is a, a team that is out in the community, which I absolutely love. Uh, Getty was one of them. Yeah. And and the new guy, Fox. Oh, yeah, Jake Fox. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. You met them? I introduced myself. Yeah, yeah. They had no clue who the heck I was. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, – but, but, um, it's awesome. But yeah, it was great to see them out in the community doing what they're doing. And that's what this team does. We got another does. returner. Yeah. So Heine Thompson, and this is a special night on Saturday. It is uh, Indigenous People. Indigenous Heritage. Indigenous Night, Heritage night uh, at MVP Arena. And we're going to have a little brotherly love. A lot of brotherly love. Or maybe love. not so much. I don't know. Three brothers. A little contention on, on the field, maybe. I've lost Heine's yeah. camera Heine, shot as he's joining us from his car. Uh, so we will get to him in a moment. But obviously, goes without saying, this team could use a win. Could use a win. There's Heine. This team could use a win. Blown out last week by Georgia. They get Georgia again. Heine can't like that very much. No. You don't want to lose to your brother. No, you get, get your brothers back. Losing to your brothers worse than tying, which was like kissing your sister. Yeah. Yep. All right, Heine Thompson with us here on Honorado and Company. Man. He's got the stick. It's it's good to see you, dude. I've got I got a stick. I'm looking at a a, a car seat for yeah. a kid in the back there. <laughs> where are, where are you headed, man? We're uh, I'm headed to the gym, and then I got to do some shooting around today. So, all right. Well, listen, dude. We appreciate you uh, you jumping back on the show with us here. All right, I got on one Oco. question first here. Go ahead. I know on the broadcast after the game. The, the floor reporter asked Lyle and said, you guys were going golfing in Atlanta, in Georgia somewhere. And she said, who's going to win? Who's the best golfer? And Lyle, Lyle said, well, me, obviously. Who won? <laughs> oh, he lied. I'm definitely the best golfer out of the well, four. Well, did you win? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm going to bring that up to Lyle this is there, do you Is there any skin in the game as you when you guys play? Are, are there side bets that are made? Uh, once in a while, but not yeah. – not it's too early in the season for that. We're not warmed up. Fair. Uh, how much do you owe Lyle and Georgia for for what went on last weekend? Oh, uh, we owe them a lot. A lot. Of, we haven't had the hottest uh, couple runs here of games, but uh, that was definitely uh, icing on the cake. And it's definitely time to turn something around. So, good thing we got them again this week. Yeah, can you, Ina, can you put your finger on something that you feel like just maybe isn't missing but isn't clicking at this point for you guys offensively? Um, I, I feel like we're just kind of gripping our sticks at the moment. Um, we had a, a tough little stretch there where um, we weren't really scoring, and now it's really gotten to a point where it's like, oh, do I take a shot? Do I make a mistake? Uh, uh. We need to get to a point where we're not afraid to take those mistakes. Um, we need to put balls on the net, and and hopefully they're they're dropping for us. 
Uh, in terms of I when we talked to Coach, I think it was last week, he talked about logo hunting uh, in terms of when you're hmm. shooting on a goalie, there's too much shooting right at his chest and making it easy on him. How much of the lack of offense comes from maybe not picking your spots better or or holding the ball in your stick? Is there anything to the logo hunting thing? Um, I think that comes down to kind of what I just said about about gripping our sticks. Mm-hmm. Once you're gripping your sticks, you're, you're not really shooting. The ball can go anywhere, as I feel like. Yeah. It's thing. We just talked about golf. So they say the tighter you grip that golf club, the more inaccurate your club head is going to be. And the same thing with a cross stick. Um, we just need to loosen up and pick our spots and, and kind of just hit them. And the ball goes in that way. If you saw my golf swing, you would say, dude, lighten up yeah, on you're, the grip. You're gripping your stick. Me too. A little too hard. I'm going to blame it. Next time I put one in the woods, I'm going to be like, well, I was gripping my stick a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, now, what's, I want to get to know you a little bit here, man. Uh, when you're not playing golf and not playing lacrosse, and you're not working out, which I know is something you're you're about to do here. Um, are you are you binging any TV shows? Are you a movie guy? Are you play video games? What do you got? Um, you know what? I I mean, I used to play video games. I don't watch much TV. Um, I do work uh, at an after school program. Other than that, it's really just my kids, the gym. How many kids are in the after school program that you're trying to wrangle up? Oh, uh, so in my my section, it changes. Um, so right now I have uh, 16. Um, we just do a little classroom activities and then we take them into the gym. Do you um, teach them? Are you teaching them lacrosse all the time? No, it's not just lacrosse. It's uh, more traditional teachings and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. I just mean, are you trying to like w- wiggle your way into like, hey, hey, pick up the lacrosse stick? Like, you want to learn the game? <laughs> when I first got there, we, uh, they're, they're big on like hockey and uh, basketball. And yeah. when I got there, we, we, we got a handful of sticks and we brought them into the gym. And there's a handful of kids that like to grab it every once in a while. So that's nice to see. Give me a pro athlete uh, you would you really enjoy watching as a fan. Um, my brother, Lyle Thompson. He's, I love that. That's so cute. You know, he just does things that are, uh, that are just unheard of. And yeah. almost every game, he just does something that you gotta say, wow. And, um, so he's one of the guys current that, that I, I really enjoy watching. Yeah, we experienced a lot of that oh. covering him at U Albany. He had a goal last week. He ran like a long, we call we would call it the baseline. Yep. He, and literally just dunked I behind. I, I forget. I think Jameson was in at this point, just like dunked up and over. And like, I'm like, did the, he's literally like Michael Jordan. He's like flying behind the goal. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, not, Does that make you proud to say that? Like there aren't a lot of people who can say, oh yeah, my brother's my favorite professional athlete to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not, but uh, it's, it's, it's nice to see. It's nice to know that I had, uh, I like to say I had a helping hand in that, help him kind of develop into a player that he is today. Yeah, there's no doubt. All right, man, we're going to let you run. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Ash, of course, will be on the sidelines the way she is for each of your home games. And um, good luck Saturday. Get get a little get back. Get a little get back on the brothers. Yeah, get after Lyle. I will. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. All right, Heine, man. See you, Heine. Really good talking with you. He's a fun guy. He is. I like having him. I like that he plays along with our nonsense. Well, yeah, that's what we do best Yeah, is nonsense. Um, do we have more nonsense here to do on the show? We, have, we, we have do. An, we I, have an MVP. I know. It is it is March. But as yeah. I said last week, I'm like, I need to get through the the entirety of, of February. February. Yep. We still had a week to go. So let's give out our February MVP of the month. It's time for the Marcellus Appliance Center MVP of the Month. Shout out to Johnny and Nick at Marcellus Appliance Center, uh, where we got I all love of that our jam. appliances. You like that music? Huh? Yeah. Okay. I like it. It's time for the Marcellus Appliance Center MVP of the Month. Okay. So nice we heard it twice. Shout out to John Conlon yeah. for the work that he does with this show each and every single week, uh, graphically, animations. 
We debated for a while because the Super Bowl was played in the month of February. Mm -hmm. So, like, doesn't it seem absurd to not give it to Patrick Mahomes or Andy Reid yeah. or Harrison Butker? But we, we give thought, a lot of them out to NFL players. Can so. we go to can we go to the NBA? Can we go to the NHL? And we started talking with our executive producer here at News Channel 13, who's a big Knicks fan. And he He's said, inspired us. you guys need to be looking at Jalen Brunson. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what about Julius Randle? So what did we do? We gave it to both of them. Brunson and Randle, the Marcellus MVPs of the month, as the Knicks on this Thursday are currently riding a seven-game win streak. They just beat the Brooklyn Nets. They will play Friday night, so it could very well be eight over. by the time some people see this. Yeah. Why would you go negative I right don't know. Away? It could be over, because that would be more extreme. The over would be more extreme to viewers than an eight-game winning streak. That's true. Just warning them about what they could see. These guys have been beasts. And I will admit, when the Knicks gave Brunson the contract, you, I you thought... Were. I didn't love it either. He's but, not He's not a superstar. Right. He's not an alpha player where he just... You, you give him the ball and let him go, get you a bucket. But combined with Randall... R.J. Barrett. Yeah, Barrett's been a real disappointment mm-hmm. this year, hasn't he? But but it's working for the Knicks is what I'm saying here. Yeah. I still don't. I was down on it, You but don't it's feel working. like they're going to win an no. NBA championship Gosh, with this no. roster, which is, I think, what the argument kind of was in the first place. But, uh, yeah, they've been fantastic. And and we went when we went through Brunson's stats, it was like 21, 34, 40, 19, 25, 13, 42. Yeah. And then we went through – Randall, and it was almost the exact same thing. So we're like, you know what? It's a toss-up. Let's give it to both of them. But recently, the Knicks have been one of the hottest teams in the NBA. So it's warranted the Marcelo's MVP. MVPs. Of. Plural. The month. Of the month. Yes, MVPs of the month. Okay. When we do this show next week, Mm -hmm. will we know what, what Aaron Rodgers wants? Not where he's going to be. Because the Packers would still have to work out a trade. But when we do this show next week, do I need to put in a topic bar that will looks need, like this? Will you need to buy me dinner again? Or this? Asking? Will we know what the heck the guy wants? Why I, am I buying? Is, was that the bet dinner? I don't really remember, but I think it was probably dinner. Okay. So dinner tonight on you. Um, I think we'll know. A week from now. I think we'll know. We'll be close enough. It'll be March 10th. Yeah, I th- I think 9th, we'll know, March but 9th. I'm not like super con- confident in it, super convinced that that will happen. But yeah, something has to start. Something has to start playing out in the NFL. Yeah. Free agency, trades, whatever it may be. Dominoes have to start falling. So I think yes might be the answer. And if not, I mean, we blew right through your oh, three days. It'll be it. 14 days. Um, Sam says no. Jason says no. Says no. Apparently not. We're not going to know. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just. You know what? I'm. I'm not even upset by it anymore. The way I was a lot of with that the Favre stuff. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe even a couple of years ago when it sounded like he didn't want to be part of the team anymore. Mm-hmm. I am just like, let's just figure it out, man. So I can move on with my off season, my personal know who you're going to be rooting for. That would be nice. 